everybody, let's talk Portuguese. So in my last video, I talked about the evolution of European Portuguese and how we got from Camões to today. But before I do the part three of that series and start to look at how Brazilian Portuguese came to be so different from European Portuguese and its own evolutionary path, there is one other topic that we need to talk about. As you will have guessed by now, I am talking about the different forms of addressing people or the forms of treatment. In Portuguese, that's just one simple word, tratamento, and what that means is basically just how we say you. English has its own quirks with the otherwise simple sounding you. Because you is a single word that encompasses all levels of both formality and number, Romance languages by and large have not lost this level of distinction, however, they each have their own quirks. The Latin system of address is what is known as a TV system. This is something that you see in French as well as Russian and other Slavic languages. What that means, by and large, is that there is an informal singular form of the word you, and then there is a pluralized form of the word you as well, which is then used as the formal singular you. So in the case of French we have tu and vous, and in Russian and other Slavic languages we have ti and v. French is the only major Romance language to have fully preserved this Latin system. That leads us to modern Portuguese in which we have the informal tu that you would use with your peers, people of your age group, or people who are younger than you. We have the impartial você, or simply just the third person, which is used in public settings with unknown people, such as service people, or other people who are not old enough or distinguished enough to be using the other form of address that we have, which is o senhor, senhor doutor, and all of the other variations of that indirect third-person way of addressing people. The main point here is that in Portugal we have a fairly hierarchical usage of the pronouns. The usage of the third person for you varies depending on the social status of the two people involved. This contrasts very sharply with Brazil where the standard for the singular form of you is você. Você is used in Brazil in pretty much all contexts except for the most formal of exceptions. There is regional use of tu in Brazil, especially in the southern state of Rio Grande do Sul, but that usage is often paired with the third person conjugation. Instead of saying tu es, they would say tu é. This holds true throughout other regions in Brazil where tu is used. In Brazil nowadays, it is not very common that tu be conjugated in its natural second person form. But in order to talk about you in the plural, Portuguese has undergone a massive shift from medieval times to today. The standard across all Portuguese-speaking territories nowadays is vocês. This is in contrast with languages like Spanish or Catalan that use a form of the Latin vos. This in part is related to how the word você came into existence. Vos and its conjugations are nowadays associated with biblical texts and the most formal of registers. Almost no one nowadays uses vos in the Portuguese-speaking world in a day-to-day -day context. This is because by the 17th century, the form vos had already become archaic. It was pretty much lost in general speech by the 18th century, and has through to the modern day been limited to a small perimeter in the north of Portugal. That corresponds roughly to rural and lower density populational areas along the northern border region. So as we know already, by the 17th century, Vosh had become archaic. We also know that Portuguese inherited the Latin form of address, which meant using Vosh, or the plural form of you, as a formal singular form of address. However, in that that intermittent period between medieval Portuguese and early modern Portuguese, some developments happened on a social level in Portuguese, which necessitated the use of other formal forms of address, especially when it came to the Portuguese royalty. By the late medieval period, using only vosh with the king was considered substandard and too informal. So the forms of addressing the king and nobility in the court took their cues from the Roman Empire, in which forms like vossa merce had already existed using elevated characteristics as a form of address to the Roman Emperor. It is a similar device to Vossa Merce, which begins to appear in the late medieval period in Portuguese. Vossa Merce happens to emerge as the Iberian form of address to royalty. And as things evolve linguistically, the form Vossa Merce was initially used with the Vosh conjugations. However, the Vosh conjugations with Vossa Merce eventually became to be supplanted by the third 
third person conjugations. By 1500, this process was consolidated and Vasa Merce and other reverential forms of address had begun to use the third person. This is where we derive the third person conjugation from for Vosé. So in order to get to a widespread usage of Vosé, you can imagine that the term had to get popularized somehow. This meant that the term Vasa Merce had fallen out of favor when addressing the royal court. What that means is that other forms such as Vasa Senoria, Vasa Silencia, and so on had come to be considered more adequate when addressing higher authorities. This reflects a social change in the status of the king and the royal court itself. By the early modern period, the king had come to establish himself as the center of authority of the nation. The court that surrounded the king and the royal family became the nobility and they occupied a higher privileged position in society. However, that does not belie the existence of an aristocracy, the people who had a lot of money and social status. This would eventually become paired with what we now know as the bourgeoisie. These are the people who became wealthy due to their business endeavors and were not born into it as the nobility and aristocracy tended to be. So by the 15th century, as we have this churn of forms of addressing the royal court, the bourgeoisie and the lower aristocracy had come to use Vosa Merce as a common form of address. This widespread usage of this form of address among these classes of people would then take themselves to Brazil. The colonial social structure in Brazil was a more strictly hierarchical one. What this means is that the majority of colonists from Portugal were part of this bourgeoisie who was using Vossa Merce as a form of address with each other. Given that a large plurality of the people actually living in Brazil were not necessarily this Portuguese bourgeoisie or lower aristocracy, but were indeed the slaves brought to Brazil and the indigenous peoples from there, who were often learning Portuguese as a second language and not primarily using it amongst themselves, due to this social hierarchy, the form Vossa Merce as an honorific form of address became widespread. The dissemination of tu in usage in Brazil, therefore, from the very beginning was not particularly widespread because of the differences in social hierarchy. So we have a Vossa Merce that is in widespread usage, except that Vossa Merce is a lot of syllables and what happens to long words as they are used very regularly, simply by the nature of human use of language is that we tend to reduce them into shorter, more compact words. So we end up getting to Vossé from Vossa Merce through a number of different variants that people were saying for a while. Vossé was not the only reduced form of Vossa Merce, but it did become the most prominent one. So by the late 17th century and early 18th century, we have a consolidated form of address in the form of Vossé in a general sense of the word in Brazil, and indeed in use as an impersonal, slightly formal form in Portugal itself. However, if you want to sum it all up, the reason why we have widespread Vossé in Brazil and not in Portugal and other more recent Portuguese colonies is due to the specific moment in time Time when Brazil was being colonized by Portugal and indeed the social hierarchy that existed in the Brazilian colonies. With that being said, você is largely avoided in Portugal. You will often hear people simply using the third person and somebody's name or omitting a pronoun or name altogether in order to avoid saying it. There does, however, exist a caricatured use of você in certain elite social circles in Portugal today. What I'm talking about is the phenomenon of children addressing their parents and their family as você in the rich little suburbs of Lisbon and elsewhere. This is something that I suspect is more often made fun of in Portuguese society than actually exists. However, it does exist and has existed in the country, and it is one example of the evolution of você as a formal form of address. Even to this day in Portuguese, both in Brazil and in Portugal, we have other forms of address that are related to Vossa Merce that are used in formal contexts. In the Brazilian legislative chamber, Vossa Silencia is required usage, and it is not uncommon to see and hear Vossa Silencia in formal correspondence in Portugal. But there's just one other aspect about this that I wanted to talk about. You might be wondering about Vossé and its use in Brazil, and what that means for Brazilian Portuguese grammar, given that Vossé uses third person conjugation. Now, I will go into more detail about this in my video about the evolution of Brazilian Portuguese. However, it suffices to say that the third person conjugational usage of você has been perhaps the single-handedly most important grammatical change in Brazilian Portuguese since its conception. The reason being the ambiguity that has arisen in the second and third person forms. In generalized Brazilian Portuguese, there is no longer a meaningful distinction between the second and third person conjugation 
pronunciations. This means that Brazilian Portuguese over time has had to entirely reformulate its syntax around its verb structure. Like I said, I will talk more about this in my video about the evolution of Brazilian Portuguese at a later date, coming a little bit sooner than you might expect. But for now, I think that's enough about forms of address in Portuguese. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, if you've learned something or otherwise found it interesting, leave me a thumbs up down below. You might think about subscribing to my channel if you're not already. I make videos about food, culture, and the Portuguese language, which you can find in playlists directly on my channel or in the eye above, and I will see you next time. <laughs>